the mega logai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim <coughs> is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sitkenu, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Radgar, the Holy Spirit. Without being fed under the mentoring ministry of Radgar, the Holy Spirit, as Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3.3, 3, we don't have confidence in the flesh, but rather we rejoice in the Holy Spirit of Christ. These great things which have been recorded and kept for us, with a tender consciousness, a true heart, and an upright mind, we the believers on this church age, being called as kinekitesis, could form a character of Christ in us and to govern our conduct and to shape our course. With the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, not having confidence in the flesh. And as such, many men in the present Christendom who wrongly understand or misunderstand what is the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? And the Pentecostal crowds who have grown up to the maximum, having no difference between the religion crowds of this country, started at the Corinth during the time of their sacrifice to their children, being burnt alive to become a member of a Baal, or Kali, what they call today in India. They would rather make the music and sing and dance. And while the mental agony of them, which is so hard, they would talk gibberishly. As in AD 70 of the first century itself, the gift of tongues were been seized because that was an evangelical work to be done from AD 30 to AD 70 and when the completed can of scripture has been made it has been stopped. So from AD 70 anyone who is speaking in tongues it is an absolute misconduct wherewith they know not the importance of the Holy Spirit of the Lord of a God in the church age which is for them to declare plainly the word of truth. They have lost the importance of growing up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's what we are covering in Colossians 1. After listening the gospel, the reason why he has reconciled you in the flesh to make you to be present before the Lord of a God besides him as holy and Amomas and Agnaketas, so that you have to take in condition to be rooted and grounded in love. For Isaiah 43 12, we are learning Ayasha, he saved and kept us before the foundation of the world to the praise of his glory. And in much accordance with that, we need to look what he has programmed and designed that is not reversible. It cannot be reversed. It is indispensable. It cannot be destroyed. No matter what, how much hard you might kick 
said the apostle to the Lord our Lord our God said to Apostle Paul it is hard for you to kick against the pricks in Acts chapter 9 so it is for us it is hard for us to go back and say we can do this we can do that we can reverse the program for Christ that has been given for us in the church age the program which Christ our Lord our God has designed for us in the church age is purely the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit without walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit without getting into the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit under his control we cannot therefore it says in Ephesians 5 18b but Allah plero and pneumati filled with the Spirit or controlled under the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit dear brethren those who have tender consciousness those who have a true heart those who really understand with an upright mind to walk in this life of holy manner of walking in the church age by witnessing the truth and those who would love to come in real earnestness of their heart to them the infinite depths of this holy scripture are unfolded when they take it as a little children as faith if you tell to our little children what it is they would certainly believe it by faith thus the Lord of a God for the church age he has ordained pastor teachers though would tell to you by faith they would teach to you this doctrine the importance of this doctrine he emphasizes in Ezekiel chapter 34 in verse number 14 through 16 what will be the result of it in comparison to Isaiah chapter 29 when he is going to heal when he is going to bind them that have been broken when he is going to search that have been lost under that fat shaman which is nothing but oily greasy ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit which has been given for us in 1 John 2 27 the unction so that as Christ Lord God the Father was here on this earth as he was so we are and this is what our confidence in Christ we have and our heart condemns us that boldness of parousia unwavering communion with the Lord of our God by this doctrine which you need to believe and if you don't take this doctrine day by day in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit then you will never believe it because your heart is not having that real earnestness to know the infinite depths of this Holy Scripture these are depths which are infinite it is exhaustless day by day you come and dig day by day you get a lot of information and we are not giving this information to store up your intellectual knowledge neither scriptural knowledge a little by little you eat isn't it you don't eat an entire one kg of food that has been served to you you take and you break it little by little that's the simple principle to learn that we walk one step at a time thus we learn in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit daily the great word of the Lord of God this infinite depths of the Holy Scriptures a little here, a little there, says the Lord of a God in Isaiah. So through the right mentoring ministry of the pastor teacher, the right duty of him, as we are expounding that in Colossians 1, verses 21 through 29. As many people don't understand about these things, and yet they become ministers, yet they become to look upon the Pentecostal crowds, the way how they have been growing up today. There is a great demand for rightly dividing the word of the Lord of a God in our pulpits with those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers who have been thoroughly trained in proper isagogic categories and exegesis with the right dispensing technique of dispensations in accurately handling the word of the Lord of a God through the word called as exegiomai. There is a great demand. Harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. 
even the so-called pastors are entering into a pulpit to forget the right designation as to be called as pastors when they would analyze and exegete anagonisco followed by kara the hebrew word what we are learning in jeremiah 36 6 to cry out to make you to listen to understand and that's the duty for us to teach to you every day to cry out not that we could gain something in the presence of the lord we shall require nothing do you know why it's the highest and the best privilege for us to serve you in spirit and in truth to represent the lord of a god as it is like an unprofitable slaves that which is our duty to be done for which we have been appointed and ordained to become the pastor teachers for the church representing christ our lord that is enough that honor is enough for us not that we need to make a great name on this earth great fame on this earth great honor on this earth the earth itself we consider as a useless dead body so what name we can make on this earth what fame we can make on this earth the Rechabites taught a lesson that their father commanded them not to make tents not to build up houses but to live in tents so Christ our Lord of God says in Luke do not worry what things you will get. Do not worry what things to carry. Do not take your begging bag. Because with you is indwelling Trinity in the church age. But for them it was not yet given, but it was still endowment of the Holy Spirit. If all the Spirit of the Lord of our God is with us, then whom we require on this earth to have our companion or a fellowship. Only Lord God, the Holy Spirit is enough for us to govern our conduct to build up our character and to shape our right course of life with Lord God the Holy Spirit alone we can live a life of honoring the Lord of our God to the highest honoring his word above his name and he has given for us enough through his word much more than the sufficient much more than what we require as given for us in the scriptures for us. And every passage when we read in comparison to the isagogical background, in comparison to the categories of the subject, in comparison to the right exegesis of the word, it would overflow our heart to look once again into the infinite depths of the Holy Scripture. In this great and unique dispensation after the completion of the canon of Scripture, when we have in our hands the 66 books, being always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Do you know what a great privilege it will be for us? Do you know what a great thing it is for us to serve the Lord of our God in spirit and in biblical truth? Do you know how much it meant for us to say, if Lord God could be with us, then who could be against us in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32? While we were yet sinners, he gave his son for us. But while now, after believing in Christ and call God the Father as our Father in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, do you think he will be withheld back? He has given for us much more than the most that is needed for us to live a life on this earth. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the things that have been needed for us on this earth in this pilgrimage trip he has described. But the problem with us is we haven't read it that's the Greek word, anagonisko. You haven't analyzed and exegeted the word. The Hebrew word, you haven't read it, kara, Jeremiah 36, 6. If you read it, what would be the result? He says in 36, 7. As many people don't understand the importance of why we teach. Why we teach? So that you can store up your scriptural knowledge. So that you can have at your fingertips various doctrines. No, not at all. We teach for you to take back once again the U-turn and come and put the foundation of true life in Christ, a life of holiness in the Lord. Once again to live a life of witnessing this great truth. That's what we give you, this foundation. 
not to become like a robot which can have in its mind all mannerism of artificial intelligence to keep all these things in its memory and to live a life of robo. But sometimes these robos are far greater than this man to whom this volition has been given. Because of this volition, he doesn't become to come the disciple of the word of the Lord of God every day. He would rather love to be pleased among men, among men of like-minded. <laughs> That's what we need to look some passages in Micah chapter 7 as well. When he says, I have delivered you from such and such things, the people would keep finger on their mouth and they would make their ears to be deaf. And for the church age, he has made greater things than that. Because not many mighty or wisdom men have been called, but the foolish, that's we the church, who believe in Christ by faith alone. While we have been called in those terms, the result of that in Micah chapter 7 in verse number 16, he says, the nations shall be confounded at their might. And what is that confounded? They shall be disappointed, ashamed at their strength. Gabura, and that's what the strength, the mighty valor, bravery, mighty deeds of the Lord of a God, the valor, the force, the power, the strength. Why? Because the days, he says, according to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, I will show unto him marvelous things, the pale wonders of the word of the Lord of a God, as we constantly say for you. Sanctify yourselves and look upon the pale wonders, the marvelous things, the infinite depths of the scriptures. Sanctify yourselves to walk in the spirit. Sanctify yourselves by the confession of your sins through rebound. You cannot pay your huge money and you can say you have been getting back into the fellowship. No. Neither gold and silver can purchase your salvation. Far less you can think this gold and silver giving tithes to the church, paying huge money to the church, can clear your guilt consciousness. Not at all. The word of the Lord of a God is unique right from the beginning. It says, right from the beginning, it is the word of the Lord of a God that shall cleanse you. And the word that I have spoken to you, by that you are pure, saith our Lord of a God, in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. You are cleansed by the word that I have spoke and sanctify them through the truth that I am giving for them every day. It is the word that will cleanse you, not your works. Your works can be boasting. To look upon the pale wonders, the marvelous things of this great word of the Lord of a God, of this great unique word of the Lord of a God, it demands for us to look upon the strength with which our Lord of a God has bestowed us in the church age. The strength of indwelling trinity, marvelous strength. When we have this strength, the nations will keep or shut up their mouth by keeping finger upon their mouth. The nation's ears will become deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent, they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth, and they shall be afraid of the Lord of a God, and shall fear because of you, the kine ketesis of the church age, wherewith you have been privileged with such great, highest and the best player of Baltimore privileges of all time. That's the thing which has been given for us. That's what we have been reading in Isaiah 43, 9, that all the nations being come together. They would realize, yes, this is the truth. When we reason them, what is the truth in the word of the Lord of a God? And they would say, yes, this is the truth. For the question which Pontius Pilate asked my Lord in John 18, 38 to say, what is the truth? Already he has revealed in Isaiah 43, what is the truth? He says again for us, in the prophet Matthew, that they shall lick the dust like a serpent. That's what we say for you all the time. A believer in this church age, though he is ordinary, he has been privileged with the extraordinary. Even these words are not enough to describe. Like the Geburah strength, the Megale voice of the Lord, or the highest and the 
true and the best voice of the Lord. Because the extraordinary would be in imagining for you something extra being added to ordinary, but far greater than that in the Hebrew and in the Greek we find. Though you are an ordinary believer in Christ, you have been indwelt by the Creator who has been made this creation. And the nature would easily look as the people would think that they can serve the nature and they cannot fight against the nature. For example, like the earthquakes, what we can see. The great tornadoes, the floods, what we can see. Can you go against that nature? If you cannot go against that nature, then imagine how powerful our Creator would be. Therefore, he says in Isaiah 43, 13, before the light could be formed, I existed. All the affairs of this life on this earth have been made under this light, starting from photosynthesis, converting your glucose into every other mannerism in your flesh. That is what C6H2L011. All of these things begins with the light. That is what the light in this earth, that is the sun. But Lord of God says, before this nature, before these things could come into existence, it is I who was there. Then these people are still worshipping the creation rather than the creator, they know not. The creator and the creator to be formed in us like a little Christ we ought to show forth to this world. Who are dying and perishing in their own sin unto death activities on this earth. As believers I am talking. As unbelievers. Till they could believe in my Christ and come back from John 16 verses 8 through 11. They did not believe in me because of that. It is accounted as sin. They cannot have the righteousness of me because of that. Because I am going back home they cannot be there with me. And then he says of judgment because the prince of the power of this air that is the world has been judged. And what is that it has been judged? They cannot earn salvation. They cannot make salvation. They cannot live a life to think that they are living a salvation because as many people are worried about today, when is the millennium or after the millennium because many so-called pastors who do not know the real value of the right isagogical background with dispensations, they would say AD 70, the end of the scriptures, they would not count on AD 96. From AD 70, the events have been closed. From there on, we are into millennium. These are some morons who talk. They do not even know about the rapture of the church because they say the rapture of the church has happened long back. Lord our God is not going to come back again. The word for parousia, not parousia, but parousia, they say, is going to appear. That's it. Because of such failures for you all not to realize the true importance of Bible doctrine, the true importance of the right word of the Lord of God. They lost their vision, they lost their purpose, they lost to witness the truth. Why have you been kept alive in Christ? If you could ask them, they would say they do not know. They would say they want to go back home and they want to be with the mansions where the Lord of God has kept. That's a resultant of your byproduct of believing in Christ. But what is the main purpose for which you have been still kept alive on this earth? First and foremost, to renovate the standards of your thinking. Number two, to become the witnesses of His truth wherever you go. Because we have been given this power more greater than the nature more greater than this creation because the Creator indwells in you and there is nothing that could be against you. The world itself is not enough. Thus our Lord our God makes through the church age even to the angels to learn from us. The mystery doctrine when he says for us in Ephesians 3, now through the church even the principalities and the powers in the heavenlies might learn this manifold wisdom of the Lord our God. In order to communicate this great manifold wisdom of the Lord of God, our Lord of God has appointed those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers. That's what the Bible recognizes. And whatever the world recognizes as reverence or right reverence or any other mannerism of XYZ trend which has not been found in the Bible. Reverend is a name given to my Christ. That's the title to my Lord. It cannot be given to man. No matter how holy, how pure you are, yet in you there is the old sin nature activities which will be constantly popping up in your mind. You know that very well, whether by thought, word, or deed have you sinned. Even in the millennium, the perfect environment where our Christ, our Lord of God, would rule for a thousand years, though it has been begun with the, with the believers, yet it ends up in the terms pertaining to Gag and Bogag revolu revolution and fight against the Lord because they are not happy with the terms pertaining to be peaceful with the Lord. Do you know why? Because of that old sin 
dolcin nature in you. Because of the dolcin nature in you, no man can become a reverend. Farless he can gain the title of my Lord for him and call as reverend. What the Bible calls you, he has called you as a teaching shepherd, then keep it as a teaching shepherd. If you add anything to it, if you take anything from it, be aware of your rewards in the heaven from the life where he says in Revelation 22, nothing you shall add and nothing you shall remove. In Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 2 as well as 32, nothing you shall add because if you're adding, you're adding anything to the glory of the Lord. And there is nothing that a man can, can add anything to the glory of the Lord of God apart from only witnessing and telling, yes, this is true Christ. This is the true Lord. That's what he says. What is the eternal life? Knowing that this is true Christ as we read in John chapter 17. Knowing Christ, if it is true life, then witnessing Christ is a true glory. Moving from glory to glory is from living of the things pertaining to your baby attitude, that is, what your milk, and from there on growing up to eat some bread, from there on growing up to eat some strong meat. Moving from one stage to another, that is what moving from glory to glory is the greatest and the highest attitude ever given for us to the glory of the Lord of our God. We cannot add anything except to witness that we are the truth for Christ on this earth, and the people should come to learn from us the knowledge, the knowledge of truth, because every believer is a little Christ. He is having that great indwelling trinity in him who is the creator of this heaven and the earth and if we have been indwelled by him making our heart and soul to be pure for the Lord of our God, how we need to walk. Just imagine that. Therefore, Bible says you cannot walk in the flesh when you have confidence in the flesh. Therefore, it says be controlled of the spirit and walk in the spirit and if ever you peripatao in the spirit, Bible says you march in the spirit. So I come. And Satan comes when you're walking in truth. It loves to make everything that is possible for you, that is feasible for you to perform in the energy of your flesh. And it says so much is enough why you want to go every day, crack up your head and become a disciple for the word of the Lord of our God. Weekly once is enough, monthly once is enough. Leave that nonsense to the theologians, that's enough. And the people will definitely pay at the judgment seat of Christ. They will definitely pay for the negligence. They will definitely pay for the ignorance. They will definitely pay for the arrogance not to witness the truth on this earth. At least go back and learn from some of my Indians in the country who though they worship idols, know not that they cannot give anything to them. Yet they say, early morning, fourth I have to wake up and I have to go to my God every day. They talk about the doctrines of every day and you being the true living Lord of a God, children know not what to talk that you have to come to listen Bible doctrine, the doctrinal discourse in our pulpits as Proverbs 8, 34 through 36 says for us long back, every day they would love to come and stand in the presence of the Lord of our God to learn the doctrinal discourse from you and you people do not even know where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of our God that the people will perish and yet we are able to find today in our pulpits the infinite depths of the Holy Scriptures have not been opened up unto you because you don't take it by faith neither you have your eyes to go back I can read what the Bible says because you are occupied with your works in the flesh Lord God is not happy with the works of your flesh. He has designed something to do in a pretty passion. Ephesians 2.10, the Agathe Sunya works before the foundation of the world. And what it could mean, that is, number one, to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Number one, which is nothing but to give priority for Bible doctrine. And number one, if ever it has been needed as kings to kneel down and write the Bible at least once in his entire life. You have been designed to do the good works of the Lord of our God to the highest. What are those good works? Where are those good works? Without knowing, without inhaling, how can you exhale? Without learning Bible doctrine and becoming the disciple, the good work for us is to make disciples of all the nations in all the languages which is given for us. And the power given for us is not a limit one. It's a limitless power given for us. But we limit our mind by the sin in our evolution, either by thought, word, or deed. And thus, when you limit your evolution by your sin, how would you make disciples? Satan is not hindering you, dear brother, and it is what you are making yourself an hindrance to the glory of the Lord. Striving for the mastery, taking up your cross and following my Christ every day, becoming his disciple. Do you know it's a tough time? 
because the pastor teacher doesn't mention you to come to class every day. That's why the people are perished, he says, in Hosea 4 and Hosea 6. I have a court case against thee, he says, in Hosea 4, because you have rejected the right word of the Lord of our God, so I have rejected you to become my priests. And he says, my people are desperate for what? Because of lack of knowledge. He did not give a lack of strength to say to perform miracles or healings over there. He says, lack of knowledge, lack of truth, lack of Bible doctrine. And he concludes in Hosea 8, 7 to teach a lesson for us. Sow to the wind and he will reap or win. In Galatians 6, he says, Lord God cannot be mocked. What you sow that he will reap. Be careful about this words, dear brethren. Your unique life is so great. Satan knows very well at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone your position in Christ has been exalted far I have a superior than Satan therefore Satan knows it cannot do anything the fortification that has been given to you is the greatest and the highest and the best and Satan knows it cannot even touch you far less many people think it can invel in you you have been influenced by false teachings, thus the demonic possession for you in your mind, not in your soul, not in your flesh. Because as a man thinks, so he is. If he thinks Bible doctrine, he knows very well to let go out of these activities of flesh. And yet the Lord of our God gives for us to analyze and to exegete, to cry out these things for you. Like a herald preaching these things, like a lion roaring these things. And yet, the Lord of our God doesn't have pleasure in the death of the wicked. You believers have been sanctified and kept for Christ not to die like the death of a wicked, but to die a complete satisfied one like Job. The man who sought till to the four generations, the man who has been plenteous enough, now is happy to die because he has seen everything. Even in fact, in the Apostle Paul, if he would have been martyrdomed, he would have been lived a life like Apostle John, and he would have written many more things for us. He would have thought many more things for us. And the Lord of our God knew very well what it seemeth fit for this sinful mankind on this earth. Like the way how, in Luke we read, Abraham saying to that rich man, if they would listen to the prophets that have been there on this earth and to the law of Moses, it's enough. Likewise, Christ, our Lord of our God, seemeth fit for us to learn about these mystery epistles of the church age in Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And if we would be obeying for it, that's enough. Thus he took away Paul. And he left behind for us the textbook of Revolution. The historical trends between the church, the historical trends which will take place in the tribulation period of seven years. The hand history of mankind, what is describing even through the millennium and the new heaven and the new earth. He seemed fit to write those events by Apostle John, so he took away Apostle Paul. When we are not able to master our life in the standards which he sought for us in Ephesians, Philippians and Colossians to live a new life, to live a heavenly life, to live a life of the new man putting upon Antichia, Sunechai, Hosea, Thessalatia putting upon the new epinosis knowledge for which given for us in Colossians 3.10 how we could go back and read further epistles if ever Paul would have been written through the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit therefore he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 I have many things to declare for you which I have seen in the heaven but I have been said not to declare the Rimata declare just imagine what are the things that have been still there for us to learn in the heaven. The things that have been needed for us on this earth, he penned and gave for us. How many days more you want to reject right exegioma in your pulpits? Going on preaching on sharats of theology. Sharats of making yourselves to become reverence. Sharats of not understanding that you are an absolute stumbling block between Lord and the flock. The right pastor teacher, what he would do, we read in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 16. And how they would shine up. Pray out to that, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of the word of the Lord of our God. Because nothing is more important for us on this earth. To talk the words of the Lord of our God in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, Dear, dear brethren, we shall look upon these things after this prayer. 
infinitely divine holy father as a god shed these things particularly thy infinite depths of the holy scriptures for us to be revealed by the holy spirit of the lord of our god father we pray that we be always in the fellowship of thee and teach the word though we pray a little bit late yet oh lord we want you to guide us all the time so that lord who could be against us when you are with us so father such as diligently and see if there is an offense way in us so that father you could come and abide in us for thy glory father see that we walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit breath by breath as we're going to learn these things we ask that Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message in Christ's name we pray father amen so in comparison to Ezekiel chapter 34 16 what will be for them we look for us the great things which our Lord of our God has given for us to make it to realize that those who are a rebellious people in Isaiah chapter 13 verse number 9 why I'm going there because though the Lord of our God would come to bind them up though the Lord of our God would come to search them up though the Lord of our God would come and give them that which is right and truth what they would be he says now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for a time to come forever and forever a time to come forever and forever that's what we are going now in the historical trends of the church age the time after the Lord's resurrection ascension and session till we are reaching 2030 now we are 2019 though we are 2000 years yet from the things written 700 years back though this church age could begin that is what 2700 years roughly or 2800 years roughly yet the scriptures have been recorded and kept so that we could now know and realize and understand the rebellious nature of mankind that's the problem with us why they don't come back to the straight nature because they don't have tender consciousness they don't have a true heart they don't have that which is upright in the sight of the Lord of our God to have such mind. Why it is so? Because they love the deeds of them which is very well darkness is John 3.19 as we took upon that subject. What they love? They love darkness. They love the deeds. Not to be exposed in the light. The present Christendom, why they are failing, why they are not able to get back to the feeding of the Lord of a God by making them everyday disciples. They have their own reasons to say the, the people who are coming to the church are far away. So what? Have a little flock where two or three have been gathered in the name of the Lord of a God who would come diligently to learn this word. Because it is their life, because not only it is their life to survive on this earth, it is a life of glory and honor when we go back home, what we can show our face to Lord God the Father, though we have been given much and expected much, we couldn't do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Therefore, in Mark chapter 4, in verse number 25, he says for us, though you haven't been heard what is right in the sight of the Lord of our God, with the measure what you measure, it will be measured back to you, even what you have, even that will be taken off. So you think the life on this earth to survive in require Bible doctrine, but the word says even the life which you can have in the heaven, you have to take for that right now in the church age. Because when you go back to home, to God the Father, we could be called, yes, you're faithful in little things. I will make you greater ones to be Lord over there, on, on over the matters of heavenly things. While we are not faithful to become the disciple of the word of the Lord of our God how we could be there for the work of the Lord of our God entering into the glory of Christ because those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness of the Lord of our God for such or such kind of them will be the kingdom of Christ because the life of you to be produced the character of Christ for such is the kingdom of heaven having a Christian name having a Christian name upon your home doesn't qualify you to say that you're having the virtue of Christ the renovation of the standards of your thinking is what Bible calls metamorphomai, Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3. Metamorphomai. And if you don't go back for such renovation of the standards of your thinking, on this earth you are going to lose your rewards because you are going to lose the witnesses for Christ on this earth because by the manner of walk that you lie. Making yourself falsely reverence, making yourself right reverence, making yourself to say that we are witnesses of truth and yet for the love of money, making and calling them for tithes. Though the churches doesn't call for tithes, you ask and beg for them for tithes. Where are you witnessing the truth? 
And if the people would come to know today or tomorrow the strength that has been given for them to understand Bible doctrine from a right pastor teacher, where you would stand your witness on this earth, will it not be a shame for you? And when you go back home, do you think the Lord of our God hasn't seen for you everything nakedly in Hebrews chapter 4 as he says for us? Before his presence there is nothing that could be covered, everything is naked. Your thoughts as well, the imaginations and the motivation behind those thoughts as well. He knows very well, why are you starting this church? Why are you running this church? Why are you begging the tithes? And why are you ignoring to tell them the truth? He knows very well. It will be a very double naked shame for you on this earth, even in the heaven. Those who don't produce in you the character of Christ, they are not worthy for the righteous sake to be persecuted. The Macarian believer, the happy believer is the one who has been persecuted for the sake of the righteousness of the Lord of God. And how many days more you want to cover up your hypocritical mask of life? How many days more? If the Bible says make disciples, how many of them you have made disciples? If the Bible says daily come up and carry your cross and follow me so that you can be my disciple, then how many of them are coming and carrying their cross by the time not the little cross what Christ of Lord of God carried, but the burden of knowledge of Bible doctrine, taking up your Bible and coming to class and to learn the word of the Lord of God, how many of the people are coming? In Proverbs 8, the word of the Lord of our God says, Happy are the people who would come to learn to discourse and to, who would love to come and learn the discourse of Bible doctrine in our pulpits. How many of the people are truly coming to learn that discourse? And how they have to come every day? In Leviticus 6.13, he says, The fire upon the altar shall never go out, which shall be always burning. Morning and evening, how many of the people are rightly teaching in the altar of the wood, the right word of the Lord of our God, having a serious responsibility upon their shoulders to say, much has been given for us and much has been expected from us, so that we cannot let go so easily the life on this earth by thinking foolishly the thing of this earth. What will you do with the earth? It is like a useless dead body, dear brethren. What do you do with your dead body? Will you keep it for three days on a love of that? Five days or now of that seven days? And what it would do? The chemical reactions in that flesh would call you to suddenly dispose it off because of the smell you cannot bear. Such is this life on this earth. When you're walking in flesh, but when you're walking in the spirit, in the, in the work of Lord God, the Father in heaven, the nature was subjected to Joshua. The nature was subjected to the people who fought the Lord's battle, making even the sea to divide asunder into two parts. Then how much more we should be in the church age? Because the Creator indwells in us and we can have greater power than the creation on this earth. But the problem with us is a rebellious people the people who don't know the value and the importance of Bible doctrine. Go write it before them in a table and note in a book. It may be for a time to come, forever and forever. The same things again we can look in the book of Micah chapter 7 when we are reading these things it says. The power that has been given for you in verse number 17, they shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall not be successful. If you are rebellious people, you shall not make your enemy to lick the dust of it. That's what the word I want to say for you. Who are the rebellious people? In spite of daily teaching to you the word of the Lord of our God and calling you to store up, not just for intellectual knowledge, this word, but word by word, line upon line, precept upon precept, exposition of these verses from the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, as far as the Lord of our God has given this bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to expound it. To look upon the infinite depths of the scriptures of the Holy Spirit which has been given for us. The completed kind of scripture as far as we can. Because everyone according to their ability to do the work of the Lord of our God says the scripture. And yet for us these great things which have been recorded and kept for us to teach to you so that you can take. Without any financial aid or support for us. Free of charge. We don't require anything from you. 
as the Bible says graciously we have received this gift graciously it is our work to lay down our soul for the flock of Christ because nothing on this earth we could earn that could call us to be for eternity nothing the things that are in you being formed to stand in the presence of the Lord of a God that is your soul and spirit to be perfect and complete that is what we want for you to stand yourself to be perfect in the presence of the Lord of a God and unbelieving souls who are believed in Christ these are the two things that we take back home the edification complex of the soul of a believer the saving soul and spirit of a unbeliever who believes in Christ after he has known the gospel so what we can make on the the best on this earth by gra grabbing money from you by asking and begging tithes from you and charging for our messages what best we can make you may ask for our survival and the Lord of our God could feed the fowls of the heaven and the beast of the field do you think his hand is short for us to feed he would definitely provide for us those righteous givings though we say don't want because that is what he has said meat in his due season to be provided with them to whom our Lord our God has control over all the spirits of the flesh he is Lord God not man he is the Holy Spirit of Christ not flesh of animals to be depending upon he is the one who provides for everyone in the due season of his time he's going to provide for us as well we should be thankful to our parents we should be thankful to our brothers and sisters who are faithfully enough to give us this place today giving us no trouble yet to come and become the right duty of the Lord of our God to be performed we should be thankful for such great men wherewith our Lord of our God has designed for us so that we can handle this word today to the praise of his glory we should be thankful to our parents as well very well without having any disturbances for us to carry this burden Blessed are they, and we shall look them in their rewards in the heaven for what they have done to the work of the Lord, what they have assisted to the work of Christ. And the word says for us in Jeremiah 48 10 to learn cursed is the one who does the work of the Lord of our God arrogantly, ignorantly. But blessed are the one who walk faithfully in the rats on approval of the Lord of our God to the praise of his glory doing everything to the glory of the Lord of our God as Joshua could say me and my family will serve the Lord of our God so shall we we and our families will serve the Lord of our God free of cost and the Lord of our God knows for us when he could make to give the manna the food of the angels to them in the wilderness he could make from a rock to bring forth water do you not think he's going to provide for us the best food we enjoy that and why we need to charge graciously we have received graciously we shall give it back and yet many people are stuck up today for the sake of money running the churches for the sake of money they do not even know why they are causing these churches to begin as if they say last night Lord God spoke to them in a dream and he said to them you start a church because you can sing nicely you can dance nicely in the Pentecostal music is that the purpose of becoming a pastor teacher it would be better for you as our, as our Lord of our God says in the book of Jeremiah the prophet book of Jeremiah chapter number 8 in verse number 10 through 12 the discourse I will send your wife to other men, said the Lord, if you wrongly handle the word. It will be better for you to earn money by sending your wife for prostitution work rather than being fed upon saying the name of the Lord without having this bona fide gift, without giving them cara exposition of the word, without making them write analysis and exegeting of the word of the Lord of a God for the word anaginisco in the Greek without making these things it will be better for you to make your brothel business with your wife 
rather than saying, I got a dream, I have this vision, I have that dream, I have that purpose, I can speak in tongues. When you will stand in the presence of the Lord of our God and you would say, you have done completely to teach them the entire counsel of the Lord of our God and you are pure from the blood of them, which could be upon their own head. As Apostle Paul says in Acts chapter 20, when you will say that, do you know what is the entire counsel of the Lord of our God? It is not just for three years what Apostle Paul taught at the place of Ephesus day and night with tears, but it is now the entire Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. And do you know each and every word in the Hebrew and Greek, how powerful it is for us to expound so that we cannot let go from there until as we completely discourse it takes minimum every verse 8 to 10 hours or 8 to 10 episodes to call in our language if we have been taught every day one hour each or each episode is made up of one hour each when you will complete and yet you say you are a pastor being given in a vision to the Lord <laughs> you say we talk in tongues and we will be edified whom you are kidding with Kid with those morons who do not know the word of the Lord of a God, who do not read the word of the Lord of a God accurately from the original exegesis of the word. Kid with such Pentecostal stuff. Do not try to kid with them who are growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, who know what is the truth. And the people are happy to be kidded by such men. Dear brethren, every believer is unique. Every believer has been given such a great power for us in the church age. That power we call the creator indwelling in us, in our simple language. The creator who made the heaven and the earth, who has given for us these three heavens to understand. The first, the second, and the heaven of the heavens, the abode of the Lord of our God. He indwells in you because of his immanence and transcendence project. Because he's omniscient omnipresent and he indwells in you then if he is with you then who can be against you and if he is in you if you love him then why can't you keep his commandments you know very well you don't love him you love the world 1 John 2 verses 15 through 17 the epithumai the lust of the flesh the lust of the eye the vagrant brokadakai of your life, you love these things, but the will of God the Father you don't love, don't worry. When the Lord of our God will stand for you at the Bhima throne, that is what the Bhima throne of my Christ, when the people on this earth will have seven years of tribulation after the rapture of the church, and when we, the church, will be washed out with the wood and stubble stuff to be burnt in the fire. At the Bhima throne, Lord of our God would say, workers of iniquity, come over here. The one who haven't done the will of God the Father. Then you may ask, what is the will of God the Father? You haven't learned to know what is the will of God the Father. Under a Christ minister duty, for you mentioned in Luke 12, verses 41 through 48. Those who have been ignorant, even they will be beaten with many strips. Then why are you entering into the ministry? James 3, 1 doesn't is here for us. Very simple words. A very great punishment for them. James 3, 1 is very, very, very unique. He goes on to discourse with the Bible doctrine and he concludes there for us to understand the importance of rightly dividing the word of the Lord of our God by the right work of the pastor teacher. What do you think you're opening up your mouth? Do you think you're opening up your mouth for making the people to get you and give you some money or making the people to become happy in their minds or making the people to be storing up with their words? We are opening up our mouth and representing the Lord. What is his mind for us to expound for you? We are crying out, Kara. We are analyzing and executing the words for you so that you can know what are you in Christ in the church age. What is your duty for you in the church age? There is nothing that we could be added for us in the church age. As many people are happy to be added many great things in the church age. But we aren't so dear brethren. We have something great which is so unique in this church age. Not for us to be accounted, he said, but for your account to be given in Philippians 4, 17. So that while you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, it should be a very, very great and unique rewards for you. Not for us, not unto us. What we will do with the best the things of this world? Nothing. Because the best of the world is nothing before the sight of Bible doctrine. 
more than pure gold desire the word of the lord of a god more than precious stones desire the word of the lord of a god more than riches and glory of this world desire the word of the lord of a god says the scripture for us this is our life this is the root cause for all wisdom we cannot waste our time looking upon the details of life to be number one priority all the time on this earth. If the food is for the belly and belly is for the food, then definitely you need to look the things that have been needed for your belly and live a life, a life of truth for you on this earth, witnessing the truth by completing the entire Bible from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 to the highest. And yet you think you have got a vision in your dream. What the Bible calls you rebellious people. Write a note and keep for them. If you would be coming back to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and if the Lord of a God would make you to realize what are you in Christ. You know what the Bible says for us? What the way, how we could be in Christ? He says, the moon, how the way it shines like the sun. And the sun, the way, how it gives seven times greater when the Lord our God would heal us so shall be your spiritual life just thinking like sun to shine is not seven times greater than that sun because you have been given this creator indwelling in you the, under the word of player of Baltimore privileges for the church age. and that what are these people they are going to do we know very well they will be always rebellious the Hebrew word mere, what it meant to say for us, they will be always bitter and rebellious. And you know what they say? <laughs> really, we need to be thankful to the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to enlighten us in this mind. Because in Isaiah chapter 30, which was read long back, again we look over here. These are not only rebellious, but lying children, deceitful, false. The Hebrew word kakash. What are these? In which standards they are deceitful? Showing not that which is for you the right way. They love to take up for themselves as a committee members and they love to appoint them pastors. They do not even know that the work of pastor teacher, they do not even have the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, the Bible calls them cash people, deceiving people, deceptive people. The people who know not why the church is, the people who know not what is the work of missionary, the people who know not what is the work as an ambassador, the people who know not the work of evangelism. First, the people do not know whether the shepherd who is going to come or what he calls himself as a legend reverend. We know not that the daily discipleship program is much needed. It is the meditation of Bible doctrine. It is the daily teaching of the word of the Lord of our God in our pulpits that makes the difference. Not coming and asking them and coming and, and asking them to pray every day in the church, but every day expounding them the right word, expounding them the right truth. It is not only weekly ones of a sermon that you give. If we could ask weekly ones of a sermon, should be a rest for the pastor teacher. It should be given to the assistant pastors to talk. By the remaining six days he has to labor, he has to break up the fallow grounds. He should make them not to become foxes in the deserts. He shall not be like a dumb dog. When they are breaking up the fallow grounds, he shall sow into them the right word to be fallen into the fourth category of the soil, the fertile soil in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. As the seventh day you rest, you give the chance of sermon to preach to the assistant pastors. Do you know why? Because this regular crowd won't come on classes for Bible doctrine. A religion crowd comes out and the religion crowd to know the importance of the words of this pastor teacher. They should come every day to teach them a lesson tit for tat. <laughs> because the way how the church age has been so down to come weekly ones should be replaced by daily ones everyday ones even during the time of recreation between adam and eve that the back was being used every day at least minimum once 
then what else you need to know? The right gifts by the Lord our God given for us to enjoy, if He wants them to be happened every day. And how much more it should be in the standards of the renovation of our thinking every day. And yet we know people don't believe upon these things. Because they are kekash, deceptive people. Though our Lord of our God rises up early and sends them to say, This is my house, don't become a rebellious people. The house which has been named by my name. The name which he uses for us to become the witnesses of this church age, of the truth. And he demands for us, as he says about animals itself in Deuteronomy 22.1, to be careful, rescue of the rescuing of the flock. How much more we need to rescue the unbelievers from that misery of hell. Therefore Jude, he says, as many as we can to pull them out from the fire. Can you pull them out? By your holy manner, walk of life at least, by your prayers at least, praying for them who are doing the evangelical work, praying for them that even you should become an ambassador to the Lord and you should become a missionary to Christ. Praying for what? Your needs. <laughs> Lord God would laugh at your prayers. When he says, everything I can make, Rather than praying for the souls that are perishing, praying for the people who haven't reached the maximum glorification of Christ, praying for the people who should grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. That's what the greatest prayer we learn in Ephesians 1 as well as in John 17. In Ephesians 1, to enlighten the inner eyes, praying for them. Rather than praying for them, what you pray? Boy crazy, girl crazy, your material life to be successful your personal life to be successful until unless you have been successful with Christ no way you can be successful in any mannerism of your life therefore Joshua 1 9 he teaches for us how your days to be prosperous and successful do not turn away from this word right or left all the days of your life that I've given to you keep it in you all the time Walk according to that truth. So all the time from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, first what you need to do, invest time to know what it is. Without investing time to know what it is, what you're thinking, you're becoming successful. Though a man wishes you successful life, can you become successful? Not at all. The Lord of our God intends everyone to walk in the new image which he has made for us. Ephesians 4.24, Colossians 3.10. That man demands nothing but holiness and the categories of doctrine. He doesn't demand anything else. What is that holiness in spirit? The confession of our sins through rebound. What is that categories of doctrine? The word of the Lord of our God to be taught every day. That's it. You are no longer of your old man so that you can think you are walking the old man and you can be available to walk a life of lie. No, you are a new man. The new man demands holiness and in the sphere of doctrine or categories of doctrine to be taught exegetically every day. He demands that so that you can, life, you can have a life, a life of truth. You can enjoy the calling in Christ. Do not become like this deceptive people, rebellious people. A cash people or the mere people, mere and cash, rebellious and deceptive people. Why they are deceptive people? They deceive the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in order to control them. If you are under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the first thing what Lord God, the Holy Spirit does is to lead you to go and to search your soul diligently, which has been filled with garbage, and cleanse it out. How? Through the word of the Lord of our God, in the water of Bible doctrine. That's the very simple technique. Without taking in the word, how you could renovate the standards of your thinking, dear brethren? You cannot. Without taking in this great infallible and inherent word of the Lord of our God, how you could think you're walking in the Spirit without knowing what are the rules and regulations given for us in this church age, what are the rules and regulations being given for us as heavenly citizens in Christ? How can you? Do you think you have a supervision, the sixth or seventh sense, which can enlighten you to walk like a Christian in this church age? Not at all. It is the word of the Lord of a God. And it is not just the word of the Lord of a God, but being taught under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as the paraclete guide for us to enlighten our inner eyes. Without being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot. As many men think, 
They can gibberishly jump along and dance along and talk along and they say they have reached that maximum glorification of Christ. They have been edified and they would be piously good and they would be paying their bills. They would do every mannerism that could be true for them on this earth. But the only truth what our Lord our God demands in their life to become the disciples of his word, they are not a failure over there. Hardly you can find a man in the Pentecostal crowd who has thought saying to that public or to that congregation, I have not shown to declare to them the entire counsel of the Lord. They would say, we talk in the angels' language, we talk in the languages of X, Y, Z reasons, and they would say everything they're doing. The thing what they communicated, Hebrew, that's the angel language. As Apostle Paul mentions in the book of Acts, in chapter 22 and why this man they're not able to look upon these things yet because they love to replace the right burden of carrying their cross every day and becoming the disciple of the word of the Lord of a God so what they are they are so much cunningly deceptive they are neither they are not only just rebellious but cunningly deceptive cunningly deceptive In every mannerism, they know very well what they're doing. And yet they love to think. They're fighting a battle like Nehemiah, the one who fought and built it in 52 days, having at one hand the sword, on the other hand the work of the instruments to build, the te to build the wall or to build that city over there where he went to build it. They think they're doing that. No. They think the people who are not graduating for them to come back and support for their work that, that they are the Tekoites and the Merozites who do not come to work for the Lord. The Lord God demands only one thing, grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. If you are not doing that, no matter whatever good you think you are doing, it will be only for this earth. A shameful life to be faced in the heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. Though you may think, Lord, we have done this, we have paid so much of money, we have done that. He would say, workers of iniquity, I know not who you are. What is the purpose of the church? Ephesians 3, verses 8 through 11. People love not to speak it boldly because the pastor teacher is not the dean over there. And every believer is neither a professor to teach to the angels because they cannot themselves teach their own soul. That's what he says. If he can tame up your own tongue, how good it would be. But it is an unruly evil. So it is their life. They cannot train up their own soul. They cannot train up their own tongue how to talk in season and out of season or being prepared. And at the same time, being opening up your mouth as divine oracles, not only to shake the heaven as well as the earth. They do not concentrate on these things, but yet they would say they are here to become professor to the angels. And that's the church. If your church doesn't teach your, your if you, if the members of your church does not teach to the angels, then it's not a church. No matter you may build it up by sparing or putting out some millions of dollars into it. You cannot. And you will say, Lord, we have done such kind of a great work for you. We constructed the church. And the Lord of God would say, No, not who you are. You haven't done what is in the Bible. You have done that which is in your mind. The Bible demands where two others have been gathered in his name, it's enough. The early church members would, would come and stay together in their local homes to learn doctrine every day to be discoursed. The same thing what we read in the book of Acts chapter 6. People are loving to serve tables now rather than serving the living Lord of our God. The shepherds are meant to say, why? Because they listen to the people like people like priests. And what they would say for them? They would say, in Isaiah we read these words, will not hear the law of the Lord, and which in return they say, Amar, they speak and utter, to the seers, that is Ra'a, to look and to inspect. See not, that is what he says, Ra'a not, and to the prophets, he would say, that is what cause prophecy not. And what they shall not prophesy? Prophecy not unto us, right things, nekoka, straight in front. <laughs> As many people in the present Christendom should learn about these things. 
If you are not able to listen these things, as it says in Jeremiah 37, 7, the curse in the fury of the Lord of a God in his wrath, all the things that have been mentioned in the law, that is what he has written for them in Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26, would be fulfilled upon your lives if you would reject the word of the Lord of a God. How many days more you want to reject the straight things, the right things, the upright things? They would say to the prophecy, look us not unto straight things. They would say, speak unto us smooth things, chalaka. What is that word chalka? Portion or a smooth portion, flattery of lips, sugar coating preaching. Come and give us the tight, Lord God will bless you. That's the sugar coating preaching. <laughs> the way this Chalka have come more in our pulpits, demanding to them to pay prosperity gospel, demanding to them to pay that they have the charismatic gospel, they will be blessed if you do this, they will be blessed if you do that, they will be blessed if you give to the church. They want such smooth things. Such smooth things may be happy for the flattery tongues, but not to the true shepherd of the Lord. The true shepherd of the Lord will speak to you that which is right in the sight of the Lord and he will tell to you whether you hear of Obia, whether you take it or not. Thus said the Lord, that's what it has been written in the Bible and we make that back to the pulpit again, whether there may be people to follow it or not whether there may be people to look and to listen it or not, whether there may be people to have their views or not, we don't care. Our duty is to blow the trumpet, our duty is to sow the seed. It is in the hand of the Lord our God to make that seed to grow up and to yield fruit. Because the infinite depths of the scripture are unfolded to a person who is walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and believing them by faith. A mustard seed of faith, a little faith. You sow the seed, it grows up and becomes a resting place for many fowls of the heaven, he says in Mark 4. And he teaches with many parables over there for us to learn that we don't want those chalka oriented pastors, smoothing, flattery lips of the pastors. We don't want them. We never want them. We want that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord of our God forever. Because not only on this earth, because many men who haven't seen the other part of Deuteronomy 29, 29, the things that we are going to have in the heaven, but yet they haven't seen even the things of this earth for them given. We are not just mesmerizing their minds and talking some things that could please them to give us more things. No. Not only on this earth, says even Second Thessalonians when we read, or in 1 Thessalonians 2 or 2 Thessalonians 2, we have that passage which says we are teaching them because the one who is indwelling in you, not for the things just to teach, and who is indwelling in you, the Trinity, God, Lord, our God, God the Father, God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit. We are witnessing to them in you. So while we are witnessing to them in you, we cannot play gimmicks. We cannot preach the smooth things that which could be causing you all to give and you will be blessed. No. Beggars beg for money. Not the royal pastors of the pastor teachers in this church age. They knew very well the voice of them will be for them to know those who have to come and to support him like the angels where he said he shall minister them. There is no need for him to ask and to beg and to say, give such and such things. Not at all. That has been needed for those who are liars, who don't have this bona fide gift. Moses said to them, when he asked for them, he said, when it is enough, enough, don't give. He did not ask to get more, more, more. No, he said, enough. And how many smooth things they want to look and what a mannerism of matalla, deceptions and illusions they want to consider. And that's what they say it seems in Isaiah 30.10. 
Prophecy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophecy decides. They are asking themselves to decide. And what is that word for decides? Matatala. That is deceptions, illusions, which is nothing but an absolute implication to cheat, to mock, to deride, to deceive. As that spirit which leaves that man and gets with it seven spirits, so this mocking men, deceitful men, would get for them another seven more, thinking that they could dedicate the church with their deceitful standards, with their delusion standards. And they would say, for the pastor teacher, get out of the way, turn aside out of the path, and that's what by their actions we look, by their decisions we look. Cause the Holy One of Israel, Kadosh, that is what Lord God the Trinity, to seize Shabbat. What a great pain it would be for them. When Isaiah is writing these things, what a great pain it would be for him. Seize from us the one who made everything, the one who made them to be. Telling from Isaiah chapter 5, a beautiful vineyard, what he prepared by dressing it. The one who says in Ezekiel chapter 16, Aloha and Ahilo by exposition before that, the way how you were, I cleansed you out while you were still in your natural of your blood. The one who took care like a father. They say for him, cease from us. We no longer need you. Thus is the present Christendom rejecting the right word of the Lord our God in our pulpit. And therefore he says, because the Holy One of Israel, they rejected, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness, and you stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach, ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant, and it shall break. It has the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a shred to take, and a fire from the hurt, or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and in rest, again a solution for you. In returning and in rest, the description in verse number 12, 13 and 14, we find how we would going to punish you. But in 15 he says, the solution for you to come back, rebound and get back into the fellowship, Revelation 3.19 as well. In returning and in rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall you strength, but you would not. You will not come for Bible doctrine, we know that. Your life, dear brethren, this is for you. And then you love to say you are having your details of this life on this earth as a millennium believer, enjoying the details of this life, as he says over here. But you said, though, for we will flee upon horses, therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon a swift, therefore shall they that pursue you be swift. And then he says, one thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one, and at the rebuke of five shall you flee, till you be left as a beacon upon the mountain of upon the top of a mountain, and an ensign on a hill. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all that they wait for him. And again he gives a solution over here. You will say you will do such and such things. But at one Thousand will fly off. At five, the entire people will be fled off. They will be left as a beacon upon the hill of a mountain. Do you know, dear, dear brethren, what are these things? The sudden deaths of many people. As such, not able to look upon the right calling in Christ. Lord of a God knew in eternity past. Though he has been given much grace, he would develop scar tissue and he would become rebellion to the Lord. In order to caution others, he would cause such untimely deaths before they could reach like Job's age. Untimely deaths, a caution of warning. A rebuke of one, thousand will fly. A rebuke of five, the entire land will be cleansed. 
you're dealing with the Most High Lord of our God. Be careful. Don't try to cover it up with hypocritical masks. He knows what you are. If you're neglecting to make up your cross and follow my Lord of our God, He knows very well what it would be. Though our Lord of God would give you bread of adversity and the water of affliction, you shall not, you shall not, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but the eyes shall thee, thy shall see thy teachers, and thine ears shall hear a word behind the saying, This is the way of the Lord our God, walk you in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left, and this is the way of the Lord our God, what we are proclaiming to you, become disciples, become disciples, become disciples, by walking in the highway of his holiness, and yet you shall not look upon this way, we know, because you have been fallen for the lustful patterns of your old sin nature, to follow the denominational trends to follow the trends of your patterns of your life to be fulfilled rather than following the true word of the Lord of our God. He says, you shall defile also the covering of the graven images of silver and the ornament of the molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away as a monstrous cloth. And this is what you need to look. The way, the monstrous cloth. Thou shalt say unto it, get thee away. The life that you're living is like a monstrous cloth without walking in the way of becoming disciples. Therefore, then shall he give the rain of the seed that thou shalt sow the ground withal and bread of the increase of the earth and it shall be fat and plenteous. Once again, the word for us, flat, which is dashain, vigorous and plenteous. In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures and then the oxen likewise and the angasses that hear the ground shall eat clean provender which hath been winnowed with the shovel and with the fan. And they shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers streams of waters the fellowship of light god the holy spirit in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall moreover the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun when you have been absolute standards of rebound and when are growing up in grace and the and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of the seven days in the day that the lord bindeth up at the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of the wound this is what we need to look in Ezekiel 34 16 what they would be and while he is bounding up and while he is healing them up you will find the difference to understand the two portions between cattle and cattle between the ram and the he goats he shall divide them and dear brethren these things are most important for us as we need to look very well the work of Colossians 121 the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher in becoming his work on this church age dear brethren if you don't want to walk upon these things let Lord God help you but we all are responsible to stand in the presence of the Lord of our God and to answer for the grace that has been bestowed upon us on this earth as we produce the thorns and thistles in Hebrews 12 6 through 8 or are we producing the crop that which is good and usable for the master of our Lord of our God? At least taking a little part of the afflictions, the lips and treasure, what he says, that the mental agony of my Christ, which we need to make every believer perfect and complete. That's what the great coach will be always. A mental agony, not an emotional one. Mental agony. Why? Because he wants them to be mentally perfect. If you're mentally not prepared to fight the battle for the Lord, then definitely you cannot prepare in your emotions. So he says for us, mental agony, the tulips and pressure, not the vicarious sufferings. And he goes before going to the cross, kneeling down and praying in the presence of the Lord of our God and saying, Father, thy will be done, not my will. The spirit is ready indeed, the flesh is always weak. In order to strengthen that flesh, he shows a way for us to kneel down and pray. That should be our life on this earth, to carry on, to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in this great burden of the church age. And if you don't do these things, let Lord God help you. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. If Christ, our Lord of God, has reconciled you to make you to be standing beside side of him in holiness, in amomas and agnaketas, then what it is that is hindering you to take your route to be grounded and settled in the knowledge of Bible doctrine from the original language of the scriptures, and what is that that is hindering you to become his disciple day by day, as they would throw out like a menace's cloth those graven images if you don't walk
walk this is the way the way to become disciple the disciples have been called as Christians then definitely dear brethren your life has been breached out it is not yet been healed we can know how you have been healed by having your moon to become like a sunlight and the sun to become seven times greater than that sunlight what it would give that will be the glorious glory of the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit shining through us to glorify Lord God the Father in heaven through the daily manner walk of life that we get by making every thought into captivity for Christ to walk in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit not only just to peripatao but to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit doing such things we can easily come back to the fellowship of the Lord our God so dear brethren to glorify him on this earth is our work and what else we have on this earth than to glorify him to the maximum so dear brethren think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow with our head board and eyes closed the closing movements have been dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life in our ability link to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ my Lord my Rock my Savior that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free and whereas for the pastor teacher the greatest merit is to carry Sothan Lagan herald the word in season and out of season because of the Dharma to my witnesses where we have been called the number one Dharma to my witnesses in the link Trinity followed by Bible in our hands and number two Dharma to my witnesses our hearers if there are no hearers dear brethren then do not worry besides nature the entire angelic host will be our witnesses because it is better for us to be alone than to be in a bad company where they would love to talk to them to say preach us smooth things and seize from us the Holy One of the Lord it is better for us not to have such men as our followers as such men who would listen to these words it will be better for us to make those who are truly humble enough to be alert with a real earnestness to know this truth because to them this indefinite to them this depth of infinite scriptures of this knowledge could be given to them so dear brethren we not worry whether they are errors or not about what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, to blow the trumpet and not to worry about it. Our work is to sow the seed, not to worry about it. Because the Lord of our God knows how the people should have the tingling ears to tingle by listening to these words and to make the seed to grow up and produce the fruit in them. It is his lookout. Our duty is to do like a vessel that which is for the Lord of our God to blow it. So dear brother, and think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. Father, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will challenge and bless us by this message. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us so that, Lord, we could live a life, a life to understand only this is the way, the way to become disciples and other things to be thrown off like a minister's cloth. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by these words. Amen. <laughs>